Good evening and welcome to RCTV's 2018 election coverage. I'm Katie Robertson and I'm coming to you here live from RCTV studios on Main Street in Reading. It's just now past 8 o'clock, so uh, the polls have now been closed. They were open today from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, those folks still in line as of 8 p.m. are allowed to, to vote. Uh, I don't see any l lines here from our field house camera, but uh, if there were pe any people in line off screen, uh, they would be allowed to stay on uh, and vote. Uh, today's election was really uh, about three primary races, the Board of Selectmen, for which there were two candidates, uh, each running for a three-year seat on the Board of Selectmen, the school committee, where there were four candidates running for three-year seats, uh, two seats, and uh, the override ballot question, which is about a $4.15 million override question. Other races today included uh, the RMLD, RMLD Light Board, uh, the Town Moderator, and Library Board of Trustees. Uh, you may have heard that there were some issues today in Precinct 8 with uh, some ballot counters. We have heard that those issues are now resolved. It may result in a later than usual response uh, and, and result for us here at the studio, um, but we, do, we will make sure to get you results as soon as we have them. Um, those will be unofficial results. Of course, the official results will not be certified until Laura Jem, our town clerk, has certified them uh, likely tomorrow. And as you can see, we do have a crew at the high school to ensure that we get you the results as quickly as possible. We also hope to have some candidates in for interviews later this evening, um, as well as uh, some, some live footage here, like you can see from the high school. Um, I believe that's all we have for right now, but please stand by. Uh, the field house will be cleared momentarily, and then we'll uh, hopefully have some results for you as soon as possible. Again, this is RCTV's live coverage of the election. Today is April 3rd, 2018. Hopefully the turnout will be high, and uh, we'll come back with some results as soon as we have them. Welcome back to RCTV's 2018 election coverage. I'm Katie Robertson, again here from downtown Reading. Um, so it's now 10, 10 minutes past 8, and if you're watching uh, our screen, you just saw Laura Jem, our town clerk, kick everyone out of the field house uh, for the official 8 o'clock closing. Um, they've now, of course, as you can see, been allowed back in, but um, that's just a, a procedural note. Uh, we do have a team down at the field house um, working the numbers. Um, so, like I said before, the main races today were for Board of Selectmen. There was John Arena and Vanessa Alvarado, who were both running for one three-year seat on the Board of Selectmen. Um, the school committee, for which there is two available seats for three-year terms, uh, incumbent Elaine Webb, Rebecca Lieberman, Sherry Vandenacker, um, and Alicia Williams, the four candidates running for those two seats. The town moderator, Alan Folds, is up again for re-election. The board of trustees, there was uh, an uncontested race of two folks, uh, Alice Collins and Andrew Grimes, running for three-year seats for that. The board of trustees also had another uh, uh, race for Monette Dugas-Verrier, who's the only uh, running candidate for a two-year term. The RMLD Light Board had a two-person term um, for which there were three candidates for a three-year seat. David Hennessy, John Walter Stempak, and Robert Coulter are each running for, again, two seats. And then each precinct will have also had town meeting member uh, races today. Um, this has been a very spirited debate uh, election season. There have been many uh, writing candidate campaigns and um, much discussion on the internet and uh, throughout town. There were a lot of signs I saw this year. Um, and in past years, we've, we've noted the lack of signs. So this has definitely been uh, an uptick in that. And um, we do have a team down at the field house now working on uh, getting us some numbers. Again, those will be unofficial results until Laura Jem, the town clerk, um, certifies them. Um, however, uh, they, they, we should be able to get unofficial results uh, this evening. Uh, the final point on the ballot today was uh, the ballot question, 
which uh, was for the override, um, 4.15 million in real estate and property taxes, um, with the percentages going to, if, if the question passes, percentages would go to uh, the education department, um, the school committee, uh, police officers, and firefighters, uh, as well as other government um, offices. This was a uh, previous override ballot was put on the agenda and ballot last year and was, did not uh, succeed. So a smaller amount was put on for the ballot this year. Um, there has been a spirited debate on both sides um, of the ballot question, so it will be very interesting to see um, what the turnout is for today. It's, I, uh, it's predicted to be higher than usual. Um, so that could be a good indication of uh, interest in town politics, which would be a really wonderful discourse. Uh, and we'll be back again soon with some more, uh, hopefully some numbers and perhaps some candidate interviews and talk about the election season. Welcome back to RCTV's election coverage. I'm here with Tom Grant, who's visiting us from the Yes for Reading group. Uh, Tom, thanks so much for coming down to the studio tonight. Uh, thanks for having me, Katie. Yeah. Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about how your group got organized and um, what, you're, what you've been trying to convey during this election? Sure. Thanks, Katie. Our, uh, our group is a grassroots organization of volunteers, uh, probably close to 200 volunteers, just residents of Reading who want to get out the message about how important this override is for our town, some of the structural issues that we're facing, and you know, how this override can help address some of those issues. So how, what kinds of things did you do to get your message out? That, there, was, uh, there was a lot of work that went into it. There was a, an executive board who helped control that message and try and communicate it as best as possible to the members of our community. So there was uh, regular emails, there was flyers that went out, mailings to the whole town. Um, we also went door to door, did as much canvassing as we could. And it's important because we need to talk to each other as a community and try to understand better what's going on at the government level um, and then also understand each individual resident's needs and how that override can sort of bridge the gap of where those two things are today. Uh, now, is this something that you supported um, in the last election too? <laughs> yes. And yes. if so, how, what, were there any differences in, um, in the two? races? And I think it's important that you brought that up, Katie, because the, in 2016, when the override vote came up then, it was a, a similar idea, you know, a collection of volunteers from the town who decided that it was very important that uh, the override passed then. And so you know, all the work that was done then by the volunteers at that time carried through. Um, and I think uh, although that override didn't pass, what it did was open some eyes to some, uh, for some people in our community get them more involved, more civically engaged, which is what you want as a community, and get them more passionate for this time around. So I would say uh, probably the main difference from last time to this time, besides this being a much smaller override, is that we had many more volunteers willing to go out, communicate with their neighbors, send emails, knock on doors, and try and get the message across. So how have you, um, how have you approached this election season? It, it seems like it's been something, a, a season that's been particularly um, spirited and there's oh, been a lot of discussion <laughs> um, and I believe that that may present itself in higher turnout tonight. Yes, so we've, uh, we've all been tracking the turnout as the town clerk has been putting up the numbers. Uh, it does seem to be tracking higher than the previous override vote, so I think that's good. You know, as a community we want everyone involved as much as possible to try and uh, everyone have their voice be heard through our democratic process. Um, you know, I think, uh, as you said, it's been spirited. Um, and part of that is that there was also the election for the uh, Board of Selectmen, mm -hmm. then also for the school committee. I think what was important, though, is that all the candidates running all supported the override. And if you look across the board, the people most involved with the town at the elected level and also at the appointed level, they all recognized the need for this override and all were uh, open about it and communicated about how we did, this town needs this override. Thank you so much for stopping by, Tom. Hopefully we'll have some numbers to share with you and the rest of our viewers um, as soon as possible. Uh, they, the polls have closed, as I've said, and um, I, hopefully everyone will be able to go home and get, it, get in <laughs> from outside in the rain. You, were, you said you weren't outside today. No, but I, I, I did my absentee balloting, but my wife was down there in the rain uh, <laughs> encouraging people to vote yes. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of volunteers down there. Again, a lot of civic engagement, so 
hopefully we can uh, get those results soon. Yeah, that's really great. Thank you so much for coming down, Tom. Thanks uh, for having And me. we'll be back as soon as we have another interview and or results. Welcome back to RCTV's 2018 election coverage. We just had an a interview with Tom Grant from the Yes for Reading group. We hope to have more interviews for you shortly. Uh, now we will be pr bringing you some unofficial results uh, on the Board of Selectmen race. So, without further ado, <laughs> uh, it should be coming up any moment now. There we go. Um, the Board of Selectmen for three-year terms for Precinct 1, John Arena has 615 votes, Vanessa Alvarado 543 votes, Precinct 2, John Arena 421 votes, Vanessa Alvarado 383 votes, Precinct 3, John Arena 450 votes, Vanessa Alvarado just one vote more with 451 votes, very close. Precinct 5, John Arena has 346 votes, Vanessa Alvarado 500 votes. Precinct 6, John Arena 403 votes, Vanessa Alvarado 427 votes. Precinct 7, John Arena 538 votes, Vanessa Alvarado 617 votes. And Precincts 4 and 8, I believe we're still waiting on. So that seemed to be a mix of uh, precinct wins for both John Arena and Vanessa Alvarado. We'll bring you more results as soon as we have them. A live shot of the field house while our ballots continue to be counted. Um, we do have precinct four numbers for you now for the Board of Selectmen as well as some school committee results. These are all unofficial results and will not be made official until the town clerk has certified them tomorrow. So for precinct four, the Board of Selectmen, John Arena has 491 votes, Vanessa Alvarado 563 votes. We're now waiting for precinct eight um, which was the precinct with the technical difficulties earlier in the day, so it'll be just a little while longer before we have those results. Um, so scrolling back through the Board of Selectmen, Precinct 1, John Arena, uh, Precinct 2, John Arena, 421, Vanessa Alvarado, 383, Precinct 3, separated by one vote for Vanessa Alvarado. Precinct 5, 346 to Vanessa Alvarado's 500. Precinct 6, 403 to 427. And Precinct 7, 538 to 617. And then the Precinct 4 numbers again, 491 for Vanessa, uh, for Arena, and Alvarado received 563. So we'll come back with some school committee numbers as soon as we have them. Um, again, Precinct 8's numbers will be a little delayed, and these numbers are all unofficial and will not be made official until they are officially certified, officially. <laughs> um, but we can bring you the unofficial results uh, this evening, hopefully. <laughs> we'll be back as soon as we have more information. We're coming back to you live here at RCTV Studios on Main Street in Reading, and I do believe that we have some school committee results. So these are four candidates for two seats um, for, I believe, a two, uh, three year term. So in Precinct 1, Elaine Webb, 594, Rebecca Lieberman, 377, Sherry Vandenacker, 393, and Alicia Williams, 491. 
In Precinct 2, Elaine Webb received 362 votes, Lieberman 274, Vandenacker 278, and Alicia Williams 329. In Precinct 3, Webb received 417, Lieberman 334, Vandenacker 332, Williams 320 votes. Precinct 4, Webb received 515 votes, Lieberman 335, Vandenacker 552, Williams 317. Precinct 5, Webb 360, Lieberman 319, Vandenacker 407, Williams 279. In Precinct 6, Elaine Webb received 362 votes, Rebecca Lieberman 255 votes, Sherry Vandenacker 337 votes, and Alicia Williams 299 votes. And the last numbers we have for you tonight for Precinct 7 are Elaine Webb with 600 votes, Rebecca Lieberman with 341 votes, Sherry Vandenacker 470, and Alicia Williams with 420 votes. Again, uh, Precinct 8 was the precinct with the technical difficulties, so hopefully we'll have uh, updated numbers for you um, from that precinct as soon as possible. Um, and we'll be able to share all of the updated numbers for the Board of Selectmen and for the school committee with those numbers. Uh, yes, as, as you can see, we're not... Oh, okay, so we have override numbers in a few moments. So there was the one question on the ballot this, this year. Uh, the override received 784 yes votes in Precinct 1, 525 no votes in Precinct 1. In Precinct 2, yes prevailed 482 to 388. Precinct 3, 516 to 496. Very close. Precinct 4, 787 to 347. Decided victory. Precinct 5, 571 to 339. And Precinct 7, yes received 811, where no received 454. So we will also be bringing you numbers um, from Precinct 8 as soon as it's available. And that will uh, update our numbers for the school committee and the board of selectmen, as well as the override. Again, these are unofficial results, uh, and the official results will, will, will be available um, in the next few days. And um, there were several other races, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Alan Folds up for town moderator running unopposed. The Board of Library Trustees had um, a vote for two candidates with Alice Collins and Andrew Grimes both running unopposed, and as well as a vote for one candidate, Monette dugas Verrier also running unopposed. Uh, and then, of um, the uh, RMLD Light Board was a vote for two with three candidates running, da David Hennessy, John Walter Stempeck, and Robert Coulter. And we'll have numbers for that race as well uh, when they're available. And of course, the ones that we're following most heavily this evening, the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, and the Override. So come back as soon as, and we'll come back as soon as we have numbers on those. In the meantime, we'll take a look at the Fieldhouse.
For those of you just joining us, it's now just past 9 p.m. on Election Day, April 3rd, 2018, here in Reading, Mass. I'm Katie Robertson at RCTV Studios in downtown Reading. And we have some unofficial numbers for the main races, uh, the primary races today. The Board of Selectmen, um, which is a three-year seat, the school committee, which is also a three-year seat, and the override question, which was the one, the one ballot question on the, um, on the official ballot today. Now, all the numbers we're going to be scrolling through are unofficial numbers. We also do not have numbers for Precinct 8 at this time, as the machines were, had technical difficulties um, during the day today. They were fixed by the time we went on air. However, the numbers are a little delayed. So here, scrolling on your screen, you have the question one override results, Precinct 5, Precinct 6, and uh, Precinct 7 will be coming up. Um, and as I said, Precinct 8 is not available to us at this time, but will be hopefully soon. Uh, so again, these are the two candidates for Board of Selectmen for a three-year seat, John Arena being the incumbent and Vanessa Alvarado being the challenger for this, this race.
And we're back. I'm here with Tom Grant again. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Um, so unofficially, I think we can announce that um, the override has passed 60-40. Again, not officially and without Precinct 8. So those are okay. two pretty big caveats. But um, if the trend continues in the way that it's gone, it seems like your campaign has prevailed. Yeah, that's, that's great. You know, I think it's a good thing for our town. It had been 15 years since the last override, and it was it was just about time for us to um, take that step again. I know it's not easy, and we'll be hard on some members of our town, but um, you know, hopefully, we can do the right thing and again try and make this one last and uh, spend our money carefully as a town. Uh, certainly, there's been, as we said before, a lot of civic engagement this time, and uh, I think that'll bring a lot more attention to how the town uses its money and spends it. And uh, I think that uh, given the way our town is run that it will continue to do so wisely. Um, and we didn't really go into what exactly um, the breakdown and the funds are going to go for. Could you speak a little to that? Sure, so the um, override itself was for $4.15 million. And that money is gonna be split just like any other uh, budget money that the town has, which is approximately two thirds for the schools and one third for the town itself. Uh, the ballot question itself actually listed some of uh, the general categories where the money is going, but more broadly it's to strengthen our emergency services. So both our fire chief and our police chief talked about how uh, they were understaffed and stretched. And then uh, on the school side, it was to maintain our current middle school model, which is very important to me. I have a middle schooler uh, and also maintain middle school foreign language. Again, I have a sixth grader who's going to seventh grade, so now I feel confident he'll get to begin foreign language as a seventh grader. Um, also, preserving other teacher positions um, in the elementary schools where I have a, a second and fourth grader, so their class sizes won't go above what the school committee has prescribed as sort of the optimal range. And then finally, restoring some of the cuts that happened at the high school over the past few years. Um, having spoken to some parents of high school students, uh, it felt like class sizes were too large, and in fact, in some cases, a, a chemistry class would be unsafe because there were so many kids uh, put in there. Uh, hopefully providing more sections so that more students are able to take the courses they want and generally uh, restoring some of the, the cuts that had happened in the past. And we, we touched on this a little bit in the earlier interview. Um, what do you think was the difference between the passing this time and the failure of the last time it was on the ballot? You know, I, I have to give some credit to our, our board of selectmen for this because uh, post the failure of the previous override, they did a survey uh, and tried to find out from the community what exactly was uh, the problem with the previous override? What are their concerns about the town? And, and the, the board worked to understand the results of the survey and try and put forth an override that could um, be more acceptable, if you will. So I think the main difference is that it's half the size <laughs> of the previous override. Uh, so that made a, a pretty big difference. But then an, another key feedback was um, knowing where that money's going. Um, and so I think it was uh, important that as part of the question, it listed with the general categories for, for the money. Um, now, uh, as we had said before, it's very important for the uh, Board of Selectmen and other town leaders to deliver on uh, what's been put in the override and for the town uh, residents to see that the town is in fact doing what they said they would do. Um, so one more one more question, like boots on the ground. What yes, is this going to mean yeah. for um, taxes? I know are, are the predominant. Um, interest point. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh, th there is a formula that uh, people can actually go to the town website and see, but uh, for the average um, assessed value home in Reading, it would be about a $500 increase on top of the normal um, uh, annual Prop 2.5 related increase that they would get in this year, and then, or sorry, in, in fiscal year 19, and then the following years would increase by 2.5% again after that. Which is again a, a smaller amount than was originally. Yes, asked approximately for, yeah. half. So yeah. last time it would have been about a thousand dollars for the average house. This time, about five hundred dollars, and that seems to be more acceptable to uh, <laughs> to our fellow Reading residents. So. Yes, again, um, unofficially, it looks like it's passed sixty forty um, without precinct eight, and um, with with the unofficial results. So congratulations Thank again, you very Tom, much. on yep. your uh, on your campaign, and um, to all of your your constituents and your. Your and the fellow, fellow volunteers, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for doing a great job and working so hard. Yes. And thank you, Katie. Thank you. Uh, all right, so we'll be back with some more as results as soon as we have them.